Hi YouTube, today I'll give you guys five things that you should do that will dramatically increase your chance of getting into medical school. So without any further ado, the first thing, the most important thing that you want to do is your MCAT uh, to have, make sure that you have a high MCAT and a high GPA. Um, every, every, every medical school have this cutoff for MCAT and GPA. They always tell you that they do this holistic approach, but if they don't do that holistic approach until you meet the MCAT and GPA requirements. You have to understand that thousands of applicants are applying each year to these medical schools and these people who are in the medical school board and the committee are also human beings. They're not gonna go through all these, all thousands of applicants all at once. What they do is they use this weed out process to eliminate some of the applicants. And they do that by looking at your GPA and your MCAT. Even companies that if you, if you apply for any jobs, even companies does that. Um, they have keywords, certain key skills that they want each of their candidates to have. If you don't even have those, they're not gonna even look at your resume. So med school, believe it or not, does the same thing but they do it with your MCAT and they do it with your GPA. If you're in Texas, um, most of the, don't quote me on this, but most of my friends who got accepted to Texas Medical School, all their GPA, all of their GPA were above like 3.5 and above, and their MCAT score was roughly sitting around 508 to 510. Uh, if you have those characteristics, uh, those kind of scores, uh, then you should be able to get into some uh, some of the Texas Medical School. Uh, but the higher your MCAT, the higher your GPA, it dra drastically increases your chance of getting into medical school because it allows the committee to actually pick up your application and go through them. Because if you don't even meet those cutoff, it doesn't matter how amazing you are on papers. They probably won't even get to know that because they, t they probably tossed it to the trash pile. So it is very important for you guys to make sure that you have a high GPA and high MCAT. However, if you are in the other spectrum um, where there's low GPA and low MCAT, I will make a video about it. So stay tuned for that um, because um, I have certain uh, some things that I would love to share with you guys if you are in that kind of in that position. Okay, second thing that you wanna make sure that you have is volunteering opportunities. Volunteering, can you can do that in two ways. You can go to the committee, uh, uh, community, uh, any kind of community in your local communities, you can volunteer there, or you can join a group in your university and you can do volunteering opportunities through those groups. So if you're doing what, what they want in a volunteering, what medical school is looking for is that, are you somebody who likes to give back to the committee? Uh, uh, community. So are you somebody, you know, who who is open to doing public service? Because medicine is a public service. You are servicing the population. So they want to make sure that you have that skills. These are not skills that you're born with. It's something that you have to develop. And the way you develop these skills is by doing it firsthand. So you want to make sure that you have volunteering experiences. Join a group in your university. You don't need to join four, five, six groups. Join at least two or three. And you make sure that you stick to it. That way it shows that you're loyal very important that you're loyal and you're committed and it gives you opportunity to become a leader which is the most important thing that you want to get out of this to show that you have a leadership quality because medical in in, in medical school they want students who have leadership qualities um, as medicine is going toward a more team oriented uh, field uh, they want physicians who are able to communicate effectively who is more approachable socially and who can also take leadership roles if the time demands. And the only way you will be able to get or, or under, get these qualities is by joining groups at your university and volunteering in communities. You also wanna make sure that you volunteer in hospitals because in that way it shows medical school board that you know what you're getting yourself into. You know the lifestyle of a physician. You're not just getting in because you had this dream when you were a child and you wanted to get into medical school. Although if you have it, great, but most of the time, you know, our dream changes as we grow up. So they want to make sure that they know they know that you know what you are getting yourself into and you're still committed and you're still motivated and you won't be able to show that if you don't have any kind of interaction uh, action in a in a hospital. And the best way to do that is volunteering. They're always hiring volunteers at the hospitals, uh, especially ERs or your local clinics, uh, stuff like that. Always go check it out and see that you can volunteer there. They're always open for volunteering. Nobody turns down volunteers. It's a it's it's a free work, you know. You're you're sh providing service for free. Nobody turns that down. Uh, if you look hard enough, I mean, there are protocols maybe that you have to do if you're applying for hospitals. You know, go apply online and blah blah blah. But it's highly likely that you will get rejected. So go and volunteer. It is very important to do that. Third thing you want to do is research. Research is extremely important, uh, and I'll tell you two reasons why it is very important. First and the uh, and the first reason is that what everybody tells you is that 
if you the medical medical school wants to know that you are open to research you know you want to be able to contribute to the society of medicine you want to be somebody who's uh, they want somebody who's knowledgeable they know uh you know they're open to new ideas uh or finding answers to questions that medicine still doesn't know so they want somebody who who has that kind of mindset because you will be researching also in medical school um, believe it or not, it, 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 it is there to boost your resume when you're applying for residency. So they, you're, you are also going to be doing, yeah, so you're going to be doing research in medical school. So they want somebody who already is exposed to research. It will be easier for you to get yourself into research in, in medical school if you were already exposed to research in, during undergrad. Second reason why research is going to help you out because of MCAT, you, all your passages or most of the passages in MCAT are research-based articles. If you are not good in research, you are not going to be good at reading research articles. So it is very important that you expose yourself to research uh, uh, early on in undergrad so you are able to read tons of research articles. When you're going to be joining research, uh, any kind of research in undergrad, they will make you read research articles to educate you about the topic. And the more you read about the articles, the more comfortable you're going to be with the verbiage of the articles. So when you're going to come to when it comes to MCAT, you're going to be reading those passages. You're not going to be struggling. I struggled. I didn't have that many, uh, good of a research experience. And it was very difficult for me to go over that hump and make myself comfortable with the verbiage of the research articles. It was really hard. My score was constantly low. And until I got used to the research verbiage, it's when I start to see increase on my uh, on my um, MCAT score, um, on my practice test. So it is very important for you guys to make sure that you guys expose yourself to the research articles. If if you are not into that much uh, into research, and I know there's a, quite a lot of you out there who doesn't like that bench research and stuff like that, make sure you take a class. Uh, make sure you make sure you take a class that show uh, that teaches you how to read research articles and. If to to minimize that to cover up that um, that lacking of research, do something else to make yourself look more presentable. Maybe pick up a job as a scribe or something. I think it's a very good opportunity. And I'll tell you exactly why scribing is important, uh, how it might benefit you later on, uh, later on in the video, and I'd make a totally different video about scribing in the first place. So stay tuned for that. Um, so you want to make sure that you, these are the two reasons why I want you to expose yourself to research, or the idea of research, because it helps you in your MCAT and it boosts up your resume for medical school. And it shows that you are uh, open to uh, the idea of giving back to the society, of uh, giving back to the med medical society and, uh, you know, have the mindset of discovering unanswered questions that medicine still doesn't know. Right. So, that, you know, early on in undergrad, make sure you expose yourself to research. Fourth thing you want to do is get good recommendation letters. You need to get have it is it is very it is very important to make sure that your professors know who you are as a person. So the way you take advantage of it is go to their office hours every time before uh, your semester starts in the syllabus. They give you office hours. These time I'm available, so come free to ask questions and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Take advantage of that. Go during the office hours, speak to your professors, ask them question about a lecture or their upcoming test or their test that you that you had. What were you good at? What were you bad at? And you will slowly you will be able to connect with your professors. And you want that connection. You want that bond because when they write that rec letter, they want you want somebody who who can represent you. And the only way you they will be able to represent you is by knowing you, by communicating with you, by making a bond with you. If you don't go to your professors and you never spoke to them and you suddenly write an email to them saying that I need a rec letter, that rec letter is not going to be, you know, it's not going to represent who you are. It's not going to be a reflection of you. It will be very artificial, very superficial rec letter that they write to every student. And it's not going to be special and it's not going to it's not going to be impressive enough for you to get into medical school or show you that who you are as a person. So go and spend some time with your professor during their office hours and try to connect with them, try to ask them questions, get to know them. Right. You also want to get recommendation letters from doctors. This is where the scribing thing really helped me out because I was a scribe and I was when I was a scribe in an ER, I was exposed to a bunch of doctors and I was able to bond and connect with many of those doctors. And many of those doctors uh, who I bonded with wrote me rec letters. So 
I, uh, you know, like that was very fortunate because they knew who you, who I was as a person, uh, as a person. They know what I was. If, uh, if I, I, they knew that I was efficient, I was effective in certain tasks. They, they, they saw me as a, a, you know, they saw me as an individual that they knew for a very long time. So they were able to write really good rec letters that reflected me as a person. So if you are not a scribe, a scribe, you know, make sure you apply to a job as a scribe or, you know, um, it, it, it will it will expose you to these doctors, you know, so you can these doctors can write you rec letters. So you need a good recommendation letters to boost up your applications. So um, things, uh, the five rec letters that you want to get are two from your science professor, one from your non science professor, one from an MD physician and one from a DO physician. If you have those five rec letters, then you should be covered. You know, you will be able to apply to broader area of medical schools. Most medical schools, uh, you know, some school asks for like, say, two science, one DO, two science, one non science or two science, one non science and one MD. If you have those five rec letters, then you should be OK. Right. Fifth and the most important. This is this is the key. A good personal statement. They need to know who you are as a person. OK, your application shows your skills and how great you are, but they don't know your story. They don't know why you want to be a physician. What motivates you? What drives you toward this career? What is it about medicine that you love, that you want to pursue and you want to put yourself into this grueling test to become a physician? This is in this personal statement. This is where you explain that you only have 4000 to 5000 characters to write about yourself. So you better make sure you know what kind of words you're choosing to write a good rec letters. It is very important that you give make sure your personal statement is read by several readers because every reader reads things in different way and they all have different suggestions. You always want to pick out the best suggestions that you're given and you want to incorporate that into your personal statement so you can get a perfect personal statement that reflects you and your story because this is what medical medical school you know gonna read to know that who you really are as a person is that some is do you have what it takes to be part of their medical school so you want to make sure that you are able to represent yourself at the best way possible so take your time reading writing your personal statement make sure you you know you don't write personal statement within a month of before applying take your time writing this personal statement because after you write it it needs to be read by different people and they all have different schedules. Some of them are gonna be busy. Some of them are gonna be free. So the busy, the one that are busy, gonna take time reading your personal statement. So you want to give them that amount of time. Uh, ask for rec letters early. Take time writing your personal statement. Make sure you're you have a good MCAT, good GPA. Get into volunteering. Get into research. If you do these things, it will drastically increase your chance into getting into medical school. So I hope. I covered everything. I hope I answered all your questions. If there's more questions that you, uh, that if there's anything that I haven't answered or you guys have any questions, make sure you put a comment below. Always, you know, subscribe, like, uh, give me love and support. I want to grow as a YouTuber and I cannot do it without your help. I want to be able to help all of you guys, you know, succeed. And again, you know, the, my, the only way out, my words are going to be out there, are going to be out there is with your help. I cannot do it without you guys. So, Thank you so much for taking your time to uh, listen to me. And if there's anything that I can do or I can improve, write it in the comment below. I'm always open for suggestion. Thank you, guys. Love you. Bye.